Optics are everything. Alright guys, I am back again. And I'm just going to address the elephant in the room. You're probably seeing this and you're like... This is what what channel is this? Why is this on a different channel? Um, why is this not on Bowie Films? And I'm I'm not doing the drama. Um, I am no longer with Bowie Films. Um, I appreciate Michael and all the time and everything he did invested in me, um, helping me grow um, as an editor and all those other things. I appreciate that. But I'm going out on my own to do my own channel and um, to get things started. So please follow and support me here. Uh, for more Manny Talks, um, the episodes will be here now on both of these channels. It'll be on Manny's Power Hour and Manny Talks. Um, so you can check it out on either channel, but uh, they're going to be on both. And, you know, I'm just going forward uh, with myself. So with that, so yeah, guys, enough of that uh, talk about that stuff. Like I said, you can find me here, Manny's Power Hour, Manny Talks, the channels. Go ahead and look me up on YouTube. Subscribe, like, comment, get in the comment section. I really appreciate everybody who does any of that stuff. Uh, so yeah, but let's jump into today's topic. So a little bit of background, Patrice Cullors, uh, one of the uh, co-founders of the Black Lives Matter movement, one of the former leaders of the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation, has been under fire for a while, uh, for, for I guess these past couple of years, since 2021 really. Um, first it came out that she you know, was buying all these million dollar homes, um, and people were kind of like, well, where are you getting the money for this from? Like, you weren't rich before, Black Lives Matter, now you're getting all this money. Like, where is this coming from? And her kind of defense to that was, well, I'm getting it from my book deals and my TV shows. Sure, you know, I've yet to see anybody else that has come out with a piece of evidence that um, displays that. But, you know, I, I'm about fairness on both sides. The, the optics of the stuff that she's doing does not look good. But, but I'm going to be fair and, and take her word unless somebody shows me something else. Uh, that she was purchasing these homes with her money. But the, the other problem is, and, and, and then here comes in the bigger issue uh, that we're going to focus on today. Uh, so what really kind of kicked this whole thing off was um, Candace Owens, if you don't know who Candace Owens is, is con uh, like a conservative YouTube social media personality, Candace Owens, um, basically pulled up on Patrice Cullens. <laughs> pulled up Game Strong, pulled up on her. Uh, to ask her questions to interview her because I guess she's doing some sort of documentary about the spending of Black Lives Matter and the whole Black Lives Matter movement from a conservative perspective. Uh, you know, whatever side you lean on, that's just what's happening. Those are the facts. Uh, so she pulled up on her to ask her those questions. Uh, and Patrice Cullors got on live and kind of said that she was harassing her and yada, yada, yada. And I wasn't there. I don't know the whole story. Uh, Candace said she was not harassing her. And so out of this came... Uh, this tidal wave of information uh, from Patrice Cullors who felt the need to do an interview after that whole situation and basically she admitted to throwing two parties at a six million dollar home purchased by black by the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation and that is a problem so let's get into the video of Candace Owens and Patrice Cullors I'm gonna try to side by side it depending on what I can find um, and then we'll get into the article. Uh, the right-wing media and right-wing pundits are creating an incredibly and have created an incredibly dangerous environment for me. Um, this morning, I woke up to Candace Owens being outside of my house with a news crew. Um, she was demanding that I come outside um, and uh, when I looked at the video recording of what she was asking about, she was actually asking about the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation property. Uh, and for some reason, it seems like she thought my house was that. Um, it's unacceptable and it's dangerous that anybody any stranger come outside of my house but it's really unacceptable and dangerous when candace owens another black woman 
who is actually working as a part of a right-wing agenda comes outside of my house with cameras. Um, as you all know, I've experienced, and many of us have experienced death threats. Um, many of us are chil have children. Um, many of us are um, uh, super vulnerable. And uh, the fact that she's came outside my house and demanded things harassed me uh, is unacceptable. It is unacceptable. And I'm going to keep doing the work I need to do to make sure that I'm in right relationship with my community, but I'm not going to let the right wing and right wing pundit, pundits and media try to drive me against my community and have the community driven against me. I'm begging and pleading with all of you all to pay attention to what's happening to me and to many other people, many other leaders inside of this movement. Pay attention to what's happening because what happened to me today has the potential to open up a floodgates, the floodgates of many other right-wing people that may next time be bearing arms, that may next time be more violent. This is unacceptable. Black people should be able to fight for our rights, for our right to live without being harassed, without being, um, fe without fearing for our lives, without having people, strangers show up to our private and personal property. I am, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm still in shock. Um, thank God. I called, obviously, my team. Um, thank God for, for community, for Black community, for Black movement community here in Los Angeles. Um, I just, I just really, really, like, y'all, I really need my family to be safe. I need to be safe. I need my child to be safe. And this, this, what happened this morning is not safety. It's not what I deserve. It's not what any of us deserve. So just be diligent when you see shit in the media. And you see shit that's being talked about. Please be diligent. Because they are purposefully doing this. They are purposefully building a wedge between black people because they know that when we are together, we're stronger and they've seen what we've done this last decade. They've seen what we've done. And so they're literally trying to destroy us. They're trying to destroy me. They're trying to destroy the movement. And I really, I just need us to be stronger. I need us to be more diligent. I need us to be more present. I need us to be clearer. I need us to be accountable. I love y'all so much. Um, pray for me, pray for my family, and pray and check on Black organizers. Okay, okay, so, so this is insane. In real time right now, I am watching uh, Patrice Colors do a live claiming that I went to her property and demanded to speak to her. Um, and she's, I, I, I only way I can describe it is she sounds like she's really scared. Um, we're working on a documentary talking about all the funding pertaining to Black Lives Matter. Obviously, we know that Patrice and a lot of the founders purchased million dollars home million dollar homes in white neighborhoods. Uh, they also purchased a Black Lives Matter property. So we went to the property and asked if there was anyone that we could speak to. Very politely, by the way, we've got cameras in tow. So there's no way she can. It's all on camera. And we just said, is there anyone we can speak to? Nobody asked us to leave. Um, the person went inside. It was just a white man that we saw outside that was providing security, which is super interesting because obviously. Patrice here is anti-police and so she's oh my god I think she's crying on this live pretending that she was harassed we like I said very politely to the guys or anyone we can speak to 
Um, my name's Candace Owens. We never went over the gate. It was just me ringing the doorbell, trying to speak to someone. He said absolutely nothing. He started just recording us. And we said, okay, if there's no one we can speak to, we're gonna leave. Um, Patrice is pretending to be scared because she knows that this Black Lives Matter lie is falling apart. Um, and she doesn't know what to do. I mean, people are aware of the scam that is Black Lives Matter. She's intentionally limited the comments. So you can't even comment on this post because I was gonna comment and be like, this is a complete lie and we have it all on camera in terms of what happened. So what you are seeing right now is the face of a woman who is pretending she's afraid of right-wing pundits when in reality she's being exposed as a fraud who took millions used the faces of black people took millions of dollars to fund herself to fund her lifestyle to fund her girlfriend and to buy million dollar mansions in neighborhoods where no black people live so patrice um this footage that we this story that we're covering is a, a significant one i have always been interested in the fraud that is black lives matter your fake tears your crocodile tears about someone politely ringing your gate and speaking to your white security guard and and asking if there was anyone that i could talk to because i was covering the story um not really going to cut it patrice this is only going to commit me further to discovering the truth about what you have done with this funding black people died you used their faces to raise money you demanded that the policing be stopped. You demanded that police officers be defunded, but you've got a private security detail um, outside of million dollar homes. It just doesn't work this way, sweetheart. So um, the truth shall set you free or Candace Owens shall set you free, girl, because I'm about to tell the truth. All right, we're still filming, bye. All right, so you guys saw the video. Uh, now let's just let's jump right into the article uh, real quick. Um, so basically, uh, you know, I, as you know, you know she's be, being met with these accusations of financial improprieties and different things like that. And I kind of wanted to get some of her words from this interview. Uh, her insight on basically they're asking her like, you know, do you know that this looks bad? The optics of this looks bad, which is, you know, how I started my video. She goes, on paper, it looks crazy. We use this term a lot in our movement, which is we're building the plane while flying it. I don't believe in that anymore. The only regret I have with BLM is wishing that we could have paused for one or two years to just not do any work and just focus on infrastructure. So that's the only regret she has. Uh, a recent disclosure, recent disclosure that the foundation had paid for a $6 million uh, Los Angeles compound in 2020 unleashed a torrent of uh, criticism and social media chatter, which it should have. What does Black Lives Matter need with a $6 million house? Why is that money not being spent in the community? Why are you buying a mansion? You know, if you, if you, you know, just from my perspective, if you listen to some of the mothers uh, who are involved, kind of involved in this Black Lives Matter, they want nothing to do with the Black Lives Matter Foundation. Um, and they state this as part of the reason, like they're not actually helping them. Um, so I get that. I, I mean, like a, as an organization, you know, first of all, Black Lives Matter in general is just a controversial thing. But as if you're running a foundation or organization, you've got to know the optics of things. Like somebody in the room should have said when they said, oh, we're going to buy a six million dollar uh, mansion that includes six bedrooms and bathrooms, a swimming pool, a soundstage, and an office space is meant to be a meeting venue and a campus for black artists. First of all, why is it a campus for black artists? Why not a homeless shelter for black people? Why not something else? If you're gonna buy something like that, you need to you gotta have your ducks in a row. And therefore, to you need a you need a six million dollar house to be a meeting place and a campus for black artists. Like, that doesn't make sense, you know? What she's saying to me just doesn't make sense from a foundation perspective. If you're running a foundation, you're not doing it right. And the optics of you buying a $6 million mansion is a problem. I would rather have them, you know, build a Black Lives Matter food bank or go out here and give to the poor and do some um, direct action or something like that. That's what they should be doing with this money, but that's not what they're... It appears... Let me not make any, any statements. It appears that is not what they're doing with these funds. Um, some criticism came from BLM supporters like Justin Hansford, director of the Thurgood Marshall Civil Rights uh, Center at Howard University. He said the property purchase could be weaponized by movement and opponents, leading possible donors to shy away from black-led social justice organization. That's the thing that you don't want to get out of hand. And just uh, third, uh, Justin Hansford, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The optics are everything, and the optics of this is really bad. 
Colors defended the purchase. We really wanted to make sure that the Global Network Foundation had an asset that wasn't just financial resources. And we understood that not many black led organizations have property. They don't own their property. You can do something like that, but why do you... See, here's the problem. Here's the problem with that statement <clears throat> and the reality. You bought a mansion. You bought a $6 million mansion. You didn't buy a building, building space, an office space to meet. That's what foundations do. They buy building spaces. They buy office spaces to meet. You bought a mansion with a pool. Why do you need a pool at a, at a, at a meeting space and a campus for black artists? Which, again, why do you need the campus for black artists? I, again, I don't. Uh, what she's saying does not make sense to me. And that's just to me. What she's saying does not make sense to me. I, I, you know, um, I'm trying to, to see it from her perspective, but if you really think about the optics of this, what was, what was done, right? How it was done. It just doesn't make sense. Color said she had made mistakes and even some regrettable choices that haven't fostered trust. She acknowledged she had used the BLM property twice for personal purposes. And that is where the problem starts. Again, when you're running an organization and you already know you're going, you're getting backlash because of that mission statement that y'all put out that not everybody agrees with. I don't know that I agree with it either, but y'all put that mission statement out and that vision statement out and y'all got a lot of heat for it. Okay. When you know people are watching you, you have to make great decisions. You cannot be throwing parties at a property that's supposed to be for Black Lives Matter. You can't do it. The optics of it are bad. Like... She probably doesn't care anymore because she got paid. Whether that be from her book deals or her TV shows or whatever happened. She got paid, okay? Black people still have problems, but she got paid. So she probably doesn't care. Um, You know, but I, I just, the optics of this. Anybody who's leading a movement or an organization, you have to think of the optics of everything that you're doing. And to me... They did not think of the optics of this, and they were just doing stuff. And then for you to use the personal property, uh, to use the property for personal purposes, not once but twice, just says a lot. It says a lot. It's, it's bad, bad decision making. It's bad decision making. It says a lot. And you're going to lose the, you, you, you know, you're going to lose the trust of a lot of supporters when they see stuff like this. Like, okay, this, this foundation is not going in the right direction. I'm not going to give my money to it anymore. You know? Oh, or it's not correct. It's not espousing. You know, you already had the ideology problem, but now you have the impropriety problem. But the 38-year-old best-selling author and artist angrily and adamantly denied accusations that she had personally benefited in the six years she got at the BLM Foundation, including me reports that she had purchased homes for herself and members of her family. The idea that the foundation received million dollars and then I hit those dollars in my bank account is absolutely false. And again, we don't have anything to say that you did. All I'm saying is the optics of this look terrible. And you, you can't argue with that. The optics of this look really, 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 really bad. She said, the, that's a false narrative. It It's impacted me personally and professionally that, that people would accuse me of stealing from black people. Well, the way you set things up. See, if you don't want to get accused, you have to be transparent about everything. Um, people can't come at you with accusations and stuff if you're transparent. The fact that you now admitted to using the property twice for personal purposes, that makes you look bad. That's going to bring more accusations. The fact that you bought all of these houses and you weren't rich before Black Lives Matter, that's going to make you look bad. You have to think about the optics of the situation. And you did not. And it's okay to be frustrated, but you didn't think of the optics of what you were doing. And this is me giving you credit saying that you didn't do anything wrong, but the optics of the situation matter. Perception for a lot of people is reality. So you have to, you have to and especially in this big of a space, move that way. Patrice Colors did not. Um, and this is what, what the fallout from it is. And so, you know, uh, Colors acknowledge that a lack of, and, and here it goes, Colors acknowledge a that a lack of transparency about the foundation's board and staff and draw perceptions that things, perceptions that things were amiss. And when the organization was transparent, revealing that it had raised millions, the reaction wasn't what she expected. I thought practicing radical transparency with black people would have been received well. She said, what was unhelpful about releasing it was not getting enough people allying with us about it. 
we weren't the only organization to receive millions of dollars. Yes, but you've received millions of dollars and um, people are not seeing, you receive millions of dollars for Black Lives Matter and people are not seeing changes in their neighborhood. People are not seeing changes in their local community. And that's the problem. Nobody cares that you're receiving funds, but what are you doing with that money? You came out and said that you got it, but y'all aren't t telling us what you're doing with that money. Who's who's uh, who's getting it? Where is it going? Is it helping the community? And that's a problem. And then this part right here adds to, again, the optics. Her, her not understanding the opt optics. Once they reveal that they have received millions of dollars and all this stuff came out about her buying homes, uh, her doing this, her doing that. Colors resigned as a foundation director to work on personal projects at the departure that had been long planned and was unconnected with any alleged impropriety, she said. The timing of doing things. If you're going to resign, you got to do it. Resigning when you have impending allegations makes you look guilty. This is the court of public opinion. This is not the court of law. Again, it just this is somebody to me who doesn't understand optics, who doesn't understand perception of things who doesn't understand those things you know she's got she's got a book an abolitionist handbook 12 steps to changing yourself in the world um and a bunch of other things we don't need to read the read the rest of the article but also the optics of what you say you are versus what you do right patrice colors owns all these homes worth millions of dollars but you call yourself a marxist does that add up to you in your mind it's, it's, it's the optics and the perception of what you're saying and what you're doing that are clashing, and that is what's that is what's causing you all of this strife. And this again, this is me giving it to you as if we didn't do anything wrong. You have to people, and this is the lesson we can take from this. Make sure what you're saying and what you're doing matches up, right? We don't want to be hypocritical, uh, but also make sure that the optics of what you're doing match up with what you're saying. The perception of what you're doing matches what you're saying, especially if you're steward, if you're being a steward over other people's money. And it's such a sensitive topic um, in cultural movement in our country. So even in your personal life, something that's sensitive, if you're a steward over something, steward over your family. Right. You don't want your kids or your wife to see what you're what you're saying and what you're doing and the perception of what you're doing not matching. You, you need to do that in all areas of your life. Be consistent. And don't be a hypocrite, as the Bible says. Be consistent, man. Just be consistent in everything that you do. Um, and that'll help you go a long way. So, yeah, man. Get in the comments. Let me know what you think. Um, comment down below. Like I said, the, the optics of this kind of look bad. You know, just, just for me, the optics look bad. But, you know, it is what it is. You know, hopefully the truth about this whole situation can come out and we can learn from it and we can grow as a nation and just people in general. Take that lesson in your life. Make sure that what you're saying matches up exactly with what you're doing. And I will be back when I'm ready to run my mouth.